This is Damian Macy, representing the Friends of the Marshall Public Library. Uh, today is July the 14th of 2015, and I'm visiting with Marilyn Lucan at her very comfortable home at 314 Pine Street. And although Marilyn did not start out in Marshall, she's been a resident of Clark County and Marshall for quite a few years. And with that, I'll introduce you to Marilyn Lucan. Good morning, this is Marilyn Lucan. Um, I was born and raised on a small little farm south of Detopolis, Illinois. And I lived there until 1957. I attended school all 12 years and attended the church there in Totopolis. But then I met this Art Lucan, and Art was from Siegel, Illinois, which is north of Effingham. And we were married in 1957, and then we moved to Siegel. My husband was employed with Country Mutual Insurance Company. So a year later, in 1958, we had a, our first daughter, Nancy, who is now married to Rick Stepp, and they do reside here in Marshall. So we um, lived there just one year, and Art got a, a job with Country Mutual, as I said before, and he was transferred to Martinsville, Illinois. So we lived in Martinsville for eight years. And as our family grew and grew, we always rented a home in Martinsville, but we outgrew our home. Because in 1966, we had our fourth child. So we bought a home here at 314 Pine Street in Marshall. And then we had another child, so we had five kids that grew up here. And I still live at this home. I love this home. It's, it's a nothing, nothing fancy. But it has served my family well. Now all the kids are gone and my husband's deceased. Art died in uh, 2000. He died very suddenly of a massive heart attack. And I continue to live here. When, I, when we first moved to Marshall, I didn't really know very many people at all. Just a very few people that my husband had met. And so, to be very frank, Marshall to me was not real inviting and it took me a while to get acquainted. I did attend a woman's club meeting one evening and I, I really was not real welcome. But I, a couple of years later after that, I joined the Marshall Knight Home Extension Group. And it was a, a bunch of women of probably 25. And I became friends with a lot of these women and am still friends with them. Then when I had been in home extension for a lot of years, I kind of outgrew that. The programs were getting repetitious. So I um, joined the Clark County Optimist Club and I am still a member of that. And it has just been wonderful for me because I have met so many wonderful people and um, have, have become friends with most of them. And I still participate. I've been secretary for the Optimist Club for years. I work part-time for St. Mary's Catholic Church and Right now, I just work on Mondays, and I'm the financial director. But I keep working because it helps me to um, keep my brain busy and uh, 
to stay up on all the um, electronics that we have in this world. <laughs> I'm trying, I have the five kids that, that we had, um, as I said before, Nancy, our oldest, is married to Rick Stepp. They live here in Marshall, and Nancy and Rick have two sons. They have Michael Stepp, who is an accountant, and he um, is married to Jack, Jackie, and they have three sons. Michael works in Clinton, Indiana, for a white construction company. Christopher lives in Chicago, and he is construction manager with uh, corporate McDonald's. And he loves his work, and he does very well. My s second child is Paul Lucan. Paul moved to Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, <laughs> and he's been there, um, I'm trying to think, probably about 20, 20 years at least. Paul and, was married to Ann Hahn, and Ann was a native of Alney, Illinois, and her, her father and mother were big farmers, and they had, they had Adam, who now is a um, pharmacist, and Adam is married to uh, Jessie, Jess, we call her, and she is an attorney in Pittsburgh. Their daughter, Lindsay, is in college at Grove City, Pennsylvania. She just finished her freshman year. What was Paul's wife name again, please? Ann Hahn, H-A-H-N. And there's a, that's a big, large family in the Alney area. Then I have Ted, is our third child, the middle child, as he calls himself. <laughs> and Ted is an, um, a CFO with a big company in Peoria, Illinois. He married Lisa Simmons, and she was from Chicago. And they have three children. <clears throat> Matthew just graduated from college at Truman State in Missouri, and he will uh, continue with his college for one more year to get his uh, graduate. Matthew is an accountant, and I have a lot of accountants in my family. Michael works for Pricewaterhouse already and is doing well. Henry, who is named after his grandpa, Lucan. Henry just finished his freshman year in college, and he goes to Truman State also. Their daughter, Melissa, just graduated from high school, and she will attend Grove City, Pennsylvania College, where Lindsay goes. So I'll have two granddaughters going to Grove City, Pennsylvania, which is a private Christian college. Mm -hmm. Then I have Rebecca, and we call her Becky. Becky lives in Chicago, in Wilmette, Illinois. Becky married Todd Stewart, and Todd was from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Becky and Todd have three children. They have Luke, who will be 13, and he's very athletic and, and very busy. And then there's Joey. Joey is, is 11. And he's just a sweet little guy with a pleasant personality. <laughs> and then we have Addison, who is just like her big brother, Luke. <laughs> and she's eight years old, and she's the joy of her, her mom and dad. Then my fifth child is Ben Lucan. Ben is an, is an accountant, <laughs> and Ben has his own business up in Paris, Illinois. Ben was married to Cherish Duthol, and they had three children. They had Sarah, 
and Sarah graduated from from EIU a year ago and she's been working at Heartland Dental in Effingham, Illinois. But she is going back to graduate school in Lexington, Kentucky. And she has six more years of school because she's going to get her doctorate. Wow. And she wants to teach um, economics in the college. And I might add that Melissa, Ted's daughter, is also going to um, get her doctorate that's at least her goal, and she wants to teach college-level economics. And back to, t to Ben, um, Ben has Zach. Zach just finished one year in, in college, and Zach has a beautiful voice and, and would love to get into music, but it's extremely difficult to get into that field, but that is his love. So he's trying to figure out what he wants to do. And then there's Jake, who graduated last year from high school. And Jake's going to attend a school in Danville, Illinois, to work on um, turbines wow. and to work on uh, electrical uh, lines, um, as an example, his, his hope is to work for Duke Energy someday. And then when Ben and Sharice uh, divorced and Ben remarried and he married Jenny and, the, and Jenny had two daughters. Jenny was married to a Gibbons and they had two daughters, Morgan and Alyssa. And they're my my granddaughters also, and Morgan will graduate from ISU, I think in December of this year, and, and Alyssa is still in high school. So I have 16 grandchildren, and I have three great-grandsons. So my life is very busy. 16 grandchildren. Right. And Three, Three great-grandsons. Great okay. Right. Quite a marvel. Yes. Um, you know, we, we don't get together very often, all of us at one time, but the only time that we're all here is Christmas Eve. They still have to come to Grandma Lucan's Christmas uh -huh. Eve. And we all attend Mass first, and then we, we celebrate. And that's just a, a special place for all of us. I intend probably to stay here for the rest of my life. Um, don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to take care of my house because <laughs> it gets more difficult every day. So. Marilyn, as I recall, didn't you work at a bank for a while? Well, I forgot about that, actually. When, I, when we moved here, I mean, I've always worked part-time as long as we've been married. I mean, I worked for several years for, for my husband. He, I was his secretary. And then when we came here to Marshall, I worked, I started working uh, for the Board of Review at the courthouse. Oh, okay. And so I did that the, the one summer, and then, then I was offered a job in the supervisor of assessments. And I was the draftman. I took care of all the changes that were made, and drew the changes on the maps of our county. And it was very, very interesting. And I worked there 13 years. But then there was a political change because at that <laughs> time, you know, it, it went from um, appointed to elected office. And, and I ran for office and I was beat, not by very much, but anyway, it was blessing, I'm sure. <laughs> and so I went to work for Delaney National Bank and I worked at Delaney National Bank for 17 years okay. before I retired. And, and I started in bookkeeping. Then I went out in, a, in the lobby and I was secretary for the president and the vice president. And then I became assistant cashier. I opened new accounts. I um, did all the paperwork for installment loans and commercial loans. 
and so I worked there till I retired. So. And now you're still working some. And now I'm still working. I work just, you know, a few hours a week for the church, and I take care of counting the collection money on the weekend, and I um, make a deposit, and then I come back to the office and I um, go in on the computer and I um, I add everything that that each individual has given to the church, and it has to be put in separate accounts and so. So that, that's the story of my life. <laughs> well, you've had an interesting background, and I'm just going to back up to a couple things. You mentioned one of your sons worked for McDonald's. Yes. That right? uh, with that, do you get free hamburgers? No. <laughs> I have to pay for everything. I Even my coffee in the morning. <laughs> and that, you, you know, that's what... We didn't really know anything about working for corporate McDonald's. Yeah. But it's just the most interesting job for Christopher, and, and he started out in Carmel, Indiana, because they have a corporate office there. And then he was offered the job in Chicago, and um, he just, he loves his job. I mean, it's, he's, he's there from start to finish on the remodeling and the building of new McDonald's, so. Wow. And right now he's, he's got the, the, kind of the northern part of Illinois and Indiana and, and Michigan. I saw one time, and I don't remember what it is, but the number of new stores that go up in the period of a month or a year right. is phenomenal. I mean, it is. It's unbelievable how big that company truly is. Well, with all of the financial background in your family, then uh, you obviously have someone probably to help do your tax returns. You know what? You? I get a free taxes done every year <laughs> by my son, Ben. <laughs> I <thought> so. <laughs> and that's great because... I, I, by the time they all graduate, I was figuring the other day I'll have seven accountants wow. in the family. So, which that's great. They're all my God blessed all my kids with they're they're very good in math. Some of the other subjects they struggle with a little bit, but math is their calling. So, they didn't get it from their mother. They got that from their dad. <laughs> in your childhood and all. Did you have a uh, pet or anything that uh, you oh, remember? Well, I lived on this little farm and um, I was considered a tomboy because, you know, I was a baby for seven years and then along came my baby sister and that really crapped my style. <laughs> so I had to help mom take care of, of, care of my baby sister, Carol, but I also had, I had chores that I had to do all the time. I had to go out and feed them baby chickens and I just hated that job. But I, that was a job that I had to do because we were all expected to work growing up. We all had our jobs. And then, then I had to go gather the eggs in the evening and I did not like that job, but I, I did it. But you know, I, it, there were so many ex great experience that people I wish everybody could experience because I watched my dad and neighbors butcher hogs and beef and how that was all finished I helped my mother all the time uh, butcher chickens and we would do maybe a hundred chickens a day and freeze them because there were there were six of us children did she do a lot of canning of the vegetables? my mother canned everything and then finally you know as she started freezing some of the mm -hmm. things but she can and my mother was never in real good health she she had some health problems probably today she would have had more medical knowledge of, and it wouldn't been but she she was never real healthy as I always remember my mother and my dad he was a truck driver and he delivered milk when, when they'd go around to the dairy farms and collect the milk and take it every day. He did that for a long time. And then he was also ran for office and, and was, a super, or was a county treasurer in Effingham, Illinois for, okay. for four years. But anyway, um, I, we had pets. I mean, we had all kind of animals. My dad always had, had pigs. We had goats. We had sheep. <laughs> 
and we had two cows and I did milk cows you know and we and my dad loved horses so I spent most of my time with one of my brothers riding horses and that I loved riding horses and the one incident I always I tell this story dad had a pair of big old work horses which are huge horses and we lived out of town about two and a half miles and so one Sunday everybody was gone and I really wanted to go to town because I like to go to town <laughs> so I just went and got one of the big old black work horses put a bridle on it jumped on the fence to crawl on bareback and went to town I was not real popular with my dad <laughs> sure enough but I did ride horses all the time, and my mother used to say, oh, she would stand in the kitchen and watch my brother Bill and I on the horse and my, other, my two older brothers in a car racing on the road. Wasn't good to treat my mother that way. <laughs> but, you know, we, we had, growing up on the farm was wonderful. It was wonderful, truly wonderful. You had a few nicks, knacks, and scrapes, I'm sure. That, uh, all the time. All the time, and yeah. people didn't worry about as much as my gosh, a child gets, yeah. falls off a bicycle yeah. now, and it's a catastrophe. Oh, yeah. I, I jumped off of the, like a well platform one day, and, and there was a piece of glass sticking, and I cut my foot, and I went hobbling in the house, and Mom doctored that up, and no stitches ever, still have a scar, but that's okay. You know. You survived well. I survived. So, Verla, do you still have family living in the Teotopolis area? I have, um, I have two sister-in-laws that live in Teotopolis area. Uh, both of my brothers are deceased, and they they died just recently, about a year, two years apart, I guess. All of my, I have my two sisters. There were three, three boys and three girls in my family, and my brothers are all deceased and my two sisters are still living and my um, my oldest sister lives in Decatur she still has her husband they've been married 65 years but they have just moved into assistant living and um, she has the start of Alzheimer's which is very sad went up yeah. last week and had dinner with them and um, and then my baby sis, she just lost her husband a year ago. And she had five children also. And uh, she lives on a little farm, um, kind of northwest of Effingham, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we get together and do a lot of things, her and I, together. Kind of thought so. so. Yeah. So. Well, you have a couple children in the Chicago area, too, so that gives you a good reason to yeah. visit the city, I guess. Right. I do go up there, and um, not as often as I'd like, but I always take the train up there. Okay. And uh, we're having our first little family reunion, just my family at Becky's house this summer. And cool. I think most of them are going to be able to come, but Nancy and her family, because she had already had plans to do something else that week. So, But anyway, we're going to try that, because I kept telling the kids that I wanted to go somewhere, maybe for five days a week and so we've tossed it around and nobody ever did anything about it but Becky says we're going to do it yeah we're going we're just going to go to her home and it'll be home base and then we'll just they just live eight blocks from Lake Michigan so they spend all summer at the lake you know and Todd has a sailboat and yeah they love that so we'll spend time out at the lake. Have you ever dipped your toe in the water in summer in Lake Michigan? Oh yeah, many times. Kind of frosty, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Catch your breath pretty fast yeah. and dive in. Yes, yeah. So. Um, as a youngster, I'm sure you had some hobbies. And if any of those you still participate in or bring up today? Well, you know, the, ga the, the games and things we played was... Um, <laughs> you know, we would roll marbles on the driveway roll marbles and had this game see and draw this little you know trough where you'd see how many marbles you could get in the trough we did that I played jacks I played with chalk and then always when I was really small I spent a lot of my years in the sand pile that was the big yeah. and I did have imaginary friends 
You can be creative with all that saying. I had imaginary friends probably till I got married. You know, it was just something in my mind. I still think about that sometime, <laughs> and I just smile, you know. But um, did that, but riding the horses was the main thing that I loved doing. That was my big thing. When you first came to, well, Martinsville, and then moved over to Marshall, you mentioned it was kind of a, kind of an adjustment period. Mm -hmm. But are there some particular memories you have of early Marshall, say downtown, or the community that uh, really hit you? Not maybe, not all good either. But. Well, you know, Damien, I was so busy raising five kids. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay a lot of attention to what was going on in this town because I was working full time. I would come home and make dinner and my kids tease me now because they, they like Becky says, I get it mom because I would have always fall asleep while I was helping them with their homework. I mean, I'd be reading a sentence and in the middle of the sentence it was like, <laughs> but I was so tired all the time that I, I worked and I did laundry and took care of the kids and I didn't really pay a lot of attention to what was going on in Marshall. <laughs> One day kind of blended into the next. Yeah, I was just like doing my <laughs> thing, you know, and I had, I had some, some really, really beautiful, wonderful neighbors when we moved here. Obe and Sarah Beach, oh, yeah. who is, was, Fern Pierce's parents. parents. They lived right across the street and they were wonderful mm. to me. And then right on the, the west side of this block it was all Smitleys. <laughs> so it was like, you know, the Smitleys had the whole block practically and the kids all played together and I always told the kids you can go within this block but you cannot go any further. Mm -hmm. And even now that you wouldn't be able to do that. But I said at that time, I, and they they were fine, and if they if they ever left the block, they were in trouble, and they knew it. But they could go the block, and then um, as the years went by, you know, things changed. Mary Frances Harper was my neighbor oh, yeah. all this time, and and then she just had to go into the nursing home just in the last year. But she was such a good neighbor to me. There were some folks that lived right across the street from you this way. Were they still living there when you moved in? Well, right across the street when we moved here was was um, Mrs. Russell Macy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, relatives of yours. And then when, when she passed and they sold the house, it was Gil and Claudette Irvin. Yeah. And um, they're still friends, you know, with, with us. And then... Um, the place didn't really didn't change hands too often after Gil and Claudette. Um, right now, Brian Delp, he has lived there for years. I wasn't sure who lived there. Yeah, Brian Delp. Um, right next door, see, Granny Smitley lived next door to us. Mm -hmm. when, when we bought this house, there was a lady called America Johnson lived there. Do you remember her? No, I don't. That name doesn't She owned remember. that house, and then, then she passed, and they sold it to uh, Granny. And then she lived there until she passed. And then um, her son Bill and Elaine lived next to her. And then, um, well, actually, when we moved here, Murphy's lived on the end. I think it was Murphy. Yeah, Murphy. And anyway, he died, and she sold the house then, and then Bob and Marilyn Smitley bought it. Oh, yeah. And they, st of course, still live there, but then right next door to me is uh, Veronica Gibson, and she's been there now a long time, although Rick Smitley bought that house from Granny and lived there for s several years. You know. Veronica's last name was? Veronica Gibson. Gibson. Yes, and she's lived there, oh, for a long time. Um, and then uh, the next house has changed hands frequently, but now it's uh, Pam Warner lives in the next one, where okay. Bill and Elaine lived. Yeah. yeah. And then 
across the street over here, um, right now is Ashley Williams. Tony Williams bought the house and redid, he just re redid the whole home and she rents it off of him. Now back several years ago, my neighbor to the north was Virginia Lusk. She, she was Virginia Kaufman. Do you, did you know her, Damien? No, I didn't. It was Bill Dixon's aunt. Okay. She lived there and then after Art died, she came up to me one day and and wanted to know if I would be her executive and power of attorney. And it really caught me by surprise, but I said, well, yes, I would do that. And so I I looked after her and she for several years and she always apologized because she said, I'm sorry that I'm such a you know, a bother to you. And I said, listen, you have been such a diversion for me because it was right after Art died. And so I had something to think about and, and I and I helped her and would take her to the doctor. And um, and then finally she decided, she talked to me a long time, but she decided she wanted to sell the house and moved into Burnside's. And so I helped her get ready for her sale. And um, she moved into there and then I looked after her and then she was having some major health issues and, and I was going out and we had, I think the, Two days before Christmas in 2004, I think, she um, she became ill and she wanted to go and they, they sent her for a, a brain scan. And I, I went over with her and we got that done. And, and, the, and I said, I will be back Christmas Eve to see you. And she said, no, you won't because um, mm -hmm. you, your family's coming and I don't want you to come. Okay. And I said, I am coming. And she said, I do not want you to come. I said, okay. She passed it that night. I she had some indication that that was yeah. imminent. Yeah, and she said, uh, and she just died sitting on the stool. In a sex. Well, I think you've indicated that even in a few short years, a neighborhood can change dramatically. And it has really changed and continues to in the so. last just the last two, mm -hmm. three years now over there, you know, Marilyn Duzan was my, Marilyn and George were my neighbors for years. They're both gone. Now what year did you first move to Marshall? 66. 66, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And then Opal Schweitzer, mm -hmm. she had that big house, Elsie Jane Mars. Oh yeah, she and my mother were good friends. Yeah. You know, now her house is owned by Craig McNary and Sonia Prevost. Um, and there's there's people renting it now that their house burnt Maloney's and they're gonna yeah. they're moving back so um, I think Norma Prevost's uh, son is gonna move in over here Jimmy <laughs> but you know I don't know um, there's a nice really young, nice young lady bought Opal Schweitzer's, her name is Christy Owen. That name sounds familiar. And she, I don't know what Christy does, but she's a very friendly person. And her and her boyfriend have totally gutted that house and redone it, and they're living there. That's the one thing that most people who have visited us from out of town have always commented about Marshall is it's nice, clean, neat, and right. everyone seems to take great pride in their property and right. keep it up. Right. And I think that's very fortunate for all of us. It is. It truly is because it's it's a it's a nice. I mean, I feel very safe in this neighborhood. Yeah. You know, and and it's just been a nice neighborhood for me. And um, I just told someone the other day, well, it's not the best part of town like up north, but you know what? I said it's fine. It's home. <laughs> it's home. <laughs> Marilyn, over the years, has there been some individual or person? that really maybe kind of changed your life or has uh, been instrumental in your thought process, values? Well, you know, <clears throat> I've ha I have a lot of friends now and, and I keep meeting new friends because I'm trying to branch out a little bit. But you know, um, I've been friends a long time. Well, I, I became friends with Frieda Noppert after Art died because we started um, taking trips together. 
and Frida and I went on trips for probably, I don't know, maybe six, eight years. And we really, we covered a lot of territory. <clears throat> and, and her and I are, are still very good friends. And the friends in Optimus, you know, they've come and gone, or come and go, you know, it's different, it changes all the time. I can't say that there's anybody in particular that, I my very best friend lived in Teutopolis on a farm and her and her husband were just so good to Art and I and um, they are both deceased. But she was the one that was friends, we, we were friends since grade school and we shared so many things and you know, and she was the one that I would always call, you know. Um, Rhett Smitley now, her and I have become really good friends. You know, Rhett, Rhett's a good friend of mine and um, Carol Holleran has become a good friend. Ooh. Carol's just such a good person. Um, I'm trying to think who else I've been hanging out with, but I go to coffee with the girls from church because there's a group of us that go to mass and go to communion service, so we go out to coffee. So I become I've been coffeeing with with Norma Prevost for for a long time, and then Connie Richardson was mm -hmm. always my buddy. <clears throat> you know, I I've been friends with Connie for years, <laughs> and I still go out to see her at Hollybrook. And she's still just a spunky little gal. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> but you know, just the very. Usually, it was people through church, and um, you know, Pat Brunner and I worked together, mm -hmm. and Father Chris hired me up there. And of course, he came. He called me one night shortly after he got here, and about nine o'clock at night, and said. I want you to come to work for me. And it's like, <laughs> well, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> and, and so, you know, it was, I can't remember when he hired me. It was, it was after Art died. So it was also a good diversion. And I, I said, well, let me think about it a minute. And I said. He probably says, I want to know right now. Yeah, I need to know. He said, I need help up here. Because <laughs> Pat Brunner, you know, was having health problems. <clears throat> and so um, I said, okay, I'll come to work for you on, on one condition. And he said, well, what is that? I said, I will come and work when it's convenient for me. And I will come and work. I will take off when I want to take off because I am traveling a lot. And I don't want any questions asked. And he said, you got it. And he honored that for me. You're hired. Yeah. And, and I went and helped him out, pull out of this crunch he was in, and <laughs> we got acquainted. And you know, I always considered him one of my kids. Because one night we were working until, I don't know, six, seven, he said, let's just quit and go get something to eat. And I had bought a new car. And I said, well, I want to show you my new car. He says, I want you to take me for a ride in that new car. And I said, hop in. And we went to Richard's farm, had dinner. Good. Yeah. So, but anyway, just, I've just had a lot of different friends that I hang out with. Over your lifespan and all, is there a particular, say, world event or something that's really shaken you or that's so memorable it may have changed some of your, some of your life? Mm, no. Nothing, nothing really, really special that I can remember that. When Art died, that changed, of course, that, that changed my life because oh. I went from spending most of my time with my husband to seeking out a friend that, you know, could replace that. Um, and so there was, you know, there was no one, Frida actually, Frida Knopper probably and I stayed together all the, through all this because she had lost her husband. You know, and so now, you know, now I'm playing cards with a group from Optimus, you know, on Monday afternoons we play cards and um, 
you know, I just kind of do my own thing. And Donna Barth has been a really good friend to me. Oh, yeah. You know, so. When uh, we look around our houses and all, we've all got so many new modern conveniences. Right. Is there something you can say, gosh, I just could not live without that? In my house right now? Oh, probably, probably the microwave. <laughs> um, I think about half the people say that when I ask them. You that know, question. it's just, I use the microwave probably <laughs> daily. And, and, you know, I think back to how it was when I was growing up, and I just can't ever imagine going back that way. But I have seen it all. I went mm -hmm. from living without electricity. And then we finally got electricity. We did not have a bathroom in the house until the year I got married. So I pretty well lived through all that. And I remember my mom washing with a ringer washer that you had to operate. Mm -hmm. And daddy would boil the water to make it hot. And then he, he, would, he built us a little room in the basement and he would get we would ba bathe once a week, and we would. And he had a shower thing put on a five-gallon bucket, and he would heat us a, a five gallon of water, and we'd go down there and um, take a bath, take a shower. That was right downtown. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I've seen it all, you know, pretty well. You wouldn't necessarily use those as uh, wanting to go back to the good old days, then. No. I would never want to go back to the good old days. I don't think most of us would. We're, we're really all spoiled. Looking. We're just way too spoiled. And we take things for granted. Oh, yeah. All the, and I try to impress that on my kids. You know, you take things for granted. You just, you know, we don't appreciate what we have now. Marilyn, if you were traveling in, say, overseas, in the country, say England or something, and someone says, Marshall, where's that and what's that all about? What would you tell them about Marshall and why it might be a good place they'd want to visit? Well, I would tell them it's a great place to raise a family. If you want to raise a family, the school system is wonderful. It's, it's one of the best in the area, mm -hmm. I think. That's what probably drew us over here, you know, because we were looking for some place for the kids. Um, it's a safe environment, but yet you're, you know, you're close to more sh bigger city, and it's it's just a nice, clean city that care about each other. That's what I would tell them. Well, thank you, Marilyn. This has been a very fun visit. Well, and uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing your time and your life story with us. Okay. Well, and this is not for just people tomorrow, but. It's going to be for posterity in the future. Well, Someone good. will say, gee, I didn't know that about Maryland. <laughs> <clears throat> so I really appreciate your time. It's been fun. Okay. And again, a big thank you for you're, participating. You're welcome. Glad to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's nice.